Okay, so I want to talk to you a little bit about fall trolling for big trout and salmon, shallow water now. So shallow water, anywhere from 10 to 30 feet of water, you don't need downriggers and you don't need dipsy divers. You can use a slide diver if you want, but typically what we like to do with there's two guys is we like to run six planer boards. And on those six planer boards, one side I might have a couple of three colors. Three colors is lead core that's going out. And the other thing I might have is just regular mono rod and reels fishing them up high. So we're fishing shallow water now. And the rods that we're using, I'm using these 10 and a half foot Abu Garcia uh, Vendetta rods. They're awesome. I'm using the Alphamar, the 20 LC Alphamar. It's, it's really important if you catch these big kings, you really want a good, good, smooth drag system. So these are awesome, very, very affordable and a very durable rod. I like these for live bait, rig fishing, walleyes. So I, I love them for browns, kings, everything. They're awesome rods. Check them out, the 10-6 Vendetta rods. Now you can also use the 6500. I got the old school 6500 LC Abu Garcia. What's cool about this is this not only is a casting reel, it's a line counter. So for guys that like to use tackle and rods for different applications, that's a really good reel too. Not only for casting, but for trolling. And what we're doing is we're letting out a three color, a three color, and a two color. And then on this side, we've got some flat lines and crankbaits. Now, the, as far as baits that I like to use in the fall up shallow like this, I like to use spoons like this. This is a stinger spoon, and there's a lot of different types of spoons that'll work. This right here is a super fly spoon. Really, really good one, that color. Anything green, gold, blue, silver, green, silver, chartreuse, fire tiger. And then my favorite cranks that I like to use in the fall, I like using a flicker shad and a flicker minnow. Um, and, and you got to mix it up. You know, there's different cranks that'll work. There's different spoons that'll work. So we're always running fire tiger and the blue and silver, green and silver. And we're running these anywhere from about 30 to 50 feet back, depending if we're in 10 to 25 feet of water. So check out, if you like to troll, one of the easiest things to do, if you don't like casting, you can get kids out here, and you, honestly, trolling is one of your best methods for catching giant fish. Some of the biggest brown trout in the world are caught here, and if a guy's looking to catch that big, big brown, I would specifically spend a lot of time trolling one to three colors of lead up shallow from Kenosha to Milwaukee. That's where a lot of the big brown trout hang out. We're doubled up, we're doubled up! Yeah. Oh boy. I got a big one on top. We got another big brown on here. We're on some big fish right now. Talk to me, Pat. Talk to me. picking up this midday bite. Oh boy. We got some big browns going here, Pat. This is a big fish. Yeah, I'm gonna help you out. I'm gonna have to put this in a rod holder. Might have to clear another rod, but this is a big fish I got here. Oh yeah, dude, we're on some big ones. Holy shit, there he goes, Pat. Way out there. Oh crap. I'm gonna clear this one. Take your tail. Oh yeah, nice brownie. Nice little guy. Nice little fat female. Been hot. Doubled up, buddy, doubled up. Oh, yeah. Big brown. Big brown. Big brown. This is a big one. That's a big one, dude. Oh, yeah. We're gonna go neutral on the motor. That's a big one. Oh, man. Yeah, that's a big one. Big male, big hook jaw. Is that sweet or what? Big hook jaw, male brown. Oh, get a pet now! Yeah! I know it. <laughs> yeah! 
world class giant browns, baby. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about. This thing, Pat, that's a nice big old brownie back there. Just trolling along, getting some big old browns. Trying to break the world record. That's what we're out here for. Yes! Haven't seen this one yet. It's going to be a little while. Yep. Thanks. Big brown. Big buck. Big buck. He is shaking his head. Here he comes. Big head shakes. I'm gonna be ready to maybe, possibly almost put it in neutral. Here he comes, here he comes. Turn the boat a little bit here. Big one. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a big brown. Yeah, that's a big one. Wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scoop. Yeah, it's keeping the water. Oh yeah, baby. Ah! Oh! Now we're gonna let this fish go, so we are gonna totally keep it in the water. Here we go. So I just wanna take a second and talk to you about fall time crankbait fishing again. Now, we're on the inside of the harbor. We had some rain, so the conditions change. The rain brings uh, dirtier water, which is good, because a lot of times the salmon migrate into this dirtier water. However, when the water gets dirty, that's when you gotta change up your approach. That's where sometimes the crankbait bite really seems to shine because when I look in the water here, the water clarity is maybe about, I'd say about two feet. So when you get two feet of visibility, you want a bait that's rattling and making noise down there. Uh, the spoons for me, like, like this, they seem to work a little better in the cleaner, clearer water. So a little tip, when you're out here trolling and you've got dirty water like this, just make sure in the fall, you run some number nine flicker shads, number seven flicker shads. I actually have a whole assortment of crankbaits and I kind of run through them, but today the flicker shads are by far the best bait. So, oh, we got one on right here. First pass, just got set up here in Milwaukee Harbor with my good buddy, Pat, the MMA fighter. We are all good. He's got a mind of his own, doesn't he? Nice fish, Pat. Nice hen. Nice fish, buddy. Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. On the flicker, buddy. On the old flicker shad. Nice king, Pat. Take it. That is a stocked salmon. Yes, sir.